Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We bless your holy name. We had a thousand times we can't thank you enough for your mercies untold shown even unto us. Your mercy is seen. Your mercy is unseen. It is only because of your mercy that we are standing today. Father, we thank you, Lord, because your faithfulness, your mercy, your compassion is renewed every morning. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. King of glory, if you are to mark sin, none of us will be here today. Father, no one can question you. You say you have the prerogative of mercy. You show mercy on whomsoever you want to show mercy on. And compassion on whomsoever you want to show compassion on. Thank you for making us candidates of your mercy. Candidates of your love. Candidates of your compassion. King of glory, O Lord, our gathering is not unto man, it's unto you. Please reveal yourself unto us today. Speak to us. Heal us. Save us. Deliver us. Bless us. At the end of this meeting, let us know we have had an encounter with you. And you take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the Thanksgiving service for the month of February. Let's clap for Jesus as we have our seats. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, God, this year, among other things, God has said that he's going to visit us with his mercy and his favor. Uh, we've talked a lot over the weeks as to mercy and favor. The anchor scripture that we're using for the whole year is Psalm 102, 12 to 13. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon us for the time to favor us. Yes, the set time is now. My prayer is that God will arise on your behalf and show you favor and show you mercy in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, we have defined mercy as withholding judgment and punishment that we deserve and in return giving you unmerited favor that you don't deserve. We need to realize that the foundation of mercy is the goodness of God. Our God is good all the time. That is why he has chosen to show us mercy. And of course the foundation of favor is mercy. Without mercy there cannot be favor. So I prophesy into your life that this month you'll experience the goodness of God, you'll experience the mercy of God, and you'll experience the favor of God in Jesus' mighty name. But people of God, God showed me that this one God wants to take the blessing of God in our lives a notch higher, a notch higher. Amen? This one, God wants to increase the velocity of the blessings of God in our lives and shatter all barriers and limitations put up by the enemy to either limit us, hem us in, or delay us. I had a vision of things shattering, glass and walls coming down, and I saw people coming out of captivity. That is why I know that this month, if you can only believe, Every barrier is coming down. Yeah. Every limitation is ending today. Yeah. Amen? And you will enter into a worthy place in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, say, I believe. Yeah. Say, I receive. I receive. And how does God want to do it? Is a term that I call worshipful thanksgiving. Amen? Which resonates with a thanksgiving service. God wants you this month to just thank him more than you have been doing before. A heartfelt thanksgiving. Worshipful thanksgiving. And I know that as we enter into this revelation, God 
we pull down all barriers in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, the case study that we're going to use is Matthew 15, 21 to 28. It's a story that we know, Matthew 15, 21 to 28. And I'd just like to read it briefly. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Okay? And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, this story is around a Canaanite woman coming from a tribe who are the ancestral enemies of the Jews, a Gentile. And the Bible describes them in Ephesians 2.12 as people without Christ, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers, from the covenants of promise, having no hope uh, and without God in this world. That is barrier number one. People of God, strangers, hopeless, without God. It is a terrible pedigree. And that is really number one major barrier. Her lineage, her pedigree, was against her. She should have said, there's no point going to Jesus. I'm not deserving, but not so this woman of today. She would not let anything stop her from coming to Jesus. And I pray that there will be someone here who will make sure that nothing will stop you from coming to Jesus and receiving the blessing of today and this month in Jesus' mighty name. If you are that person, you say, I'm the one. Nothing, not even sin, nothing will stop you from approaching the one who is here to bless you. My prayer is that every barrier will come down today in Jesus' mighty name. Because yeah. this woman was desperate. She had no ears about her. She was shouting. She was screaming. She didn't care about who was listening. No decorum. She was an intercessor. She considered the plight and problem of a third party as hers. Arrogated it to herself. It was her daughter that was demonized. But when she approached Jesus, she said, have mercy on me. It's my problem. And there will be one or two of us here that you are here not so much for yourself, but there are issues. You are here for your children. There are lots of things happening around your family, around your career. There are people's burdens that you are carrying. My prayer is that the same God that answered this woman will answer you today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, this woman must have had about a new prophet in town called Jesus, a miracle worker, and how that they call him the son of David. And if you look at the account of this story in various versions and various, you know, books, you see that she came to Jesus standing eyeball to eyeball, standing before our Lord, standing before the ancient of days, standing before the king of kings, the lord of lords, eyeball to eyeball, 
hailing him, thou son of David. You are a miracle worker. I need a miracle. Praising him as a miracle worker. Yes, she was praising him. Yes, she was hailing him. But she was standing before him, believing that God would do something for her. But the Bible says in verse 23, it says, Jesus did not answer her a word. He was silent. You know, sometimes when you are praying to God for something and the heaven is like brass, you're not getting through. You've been on that situation for long. Many people give up. Some stop coming to church and they say there's no God in that place. It's a barrier, a major barrier. There was silence. She was shouting. She was screaming. But God did not answer her a word. God was silent. And for anyone here today that God has been silent on your matter, today there will be activity in Jesus' mighty name. I say today there will be activity in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, that should have been a put off. And as Jesus was silent, another barrier, another opposition rose from the disciples. They said, send her away. She's been crying after us. Send her away. People of God, barrier number three. People of God, very offensive. She faced apparent rejection. And to crown it all, Jesus told her point blank, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I'm a messenger. I'm here on a mission. I was sent by my father. I must obey my father. I was sent to heal, to deliver only the Jews first right now. That is the plan of God concerning me. That is the will of God concerning me. And it's true. Matthew 10, 5 to 6. Matthew 10, 5 to 6. When Jesus was sending his disciples out, he told them, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and to the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The agenda of heaven for that day, for that period, for that season was the Jews first. You can see that in Romans 1.16 also. It says Jews first. That is what he came for. It was John, later after Jesus had departed, that proclaimed the agenda of the Gentiles. So she was not on the ticket. In heaven's account, in the account before Jesus, she was not supposed to be healed or for God to answer her. She was out of turn. People of God, this was another barrier a major barrier. She was not qualified. The door was shut. People of God, you remember that the Bible says in John 5, 14, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, John 5, 14, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. This was not the will of God. So according to the scripture, the door was shot. It was a terrible situation. Heavenly barrier, historic barrier, pedigree barrier, family barrier, everything was against this woman. But people of God, this woman overlooked all these negatives. As someone will today in Jesus' mighty name. She was focused on her goal. She must have been thanking God, I believe. But when I came, it was silent. But now, at least he's talking to me. 
There is progress. He's talking to me. I'm closer. I'm hearing something. Something is happening. And I'm sure she knew Psalm 94 9. Psalm 94 9 says, He that planted the ear shall he not hear. He that formed the eyes shall he not see. How many of us know that God has heard us? God sees us even as we are here right now. He knows your down sitting and your uprising. So she said, Okay, there is progress. I know. He might say no, he might, but at least he's listening to me. So inside her, she will say, hallelujah. He spoke to me. Hallelujah. That is progress. Hallelujah. He has seen me. Hallelujah. He has heard me. That is progress. I might not have it yet, but at least there is progress. How many of us know that we are closer to a miracle than we were before we came here. Amen. Hallelujah. Today is that day that God will answer you in Jesus' mighty name. There is progression. The walls had started coming down. She knew God had seen her. And as I was preparing this message, God said to tell someone that I've heard your cry. I've seen your tears. And I will visit you this week. Yeah. If you are that person, say, I believe. I believe. Say, I receive. I receive. Be expectant because something awesome will happen this week in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, she thought Jesus will answer. She praised him. Jesus was silent. When he spoke, it was negative. People of God, when prayer and praise is not working, we have been taught that worship and thanksgiving will work. Praise the name of the Lord. My version says she knelt down before him. In surrender. It was an act of worship. An act of thanksgiving. People of God, the enemy wants you to focus on what you don't have. The enemy told Eve, has God really told you not to eat? She made him focus, made her focus on that one tree. That God said, don't eat. How about all the other things? Even the tree of life was in the Garden of Eden. Do you know? Because it was after the sin that they now put covering to surround the tree. The tree of life was there. They could have eaten of the tree of life and live forever. But that one thing that you are still believing God for robbed you of the greater blessing of God causes you to murmur. That is the plan of God. This woman had not received her miracle, but she has started thanking God because at least there is progress. There is life. Where there is life, there is hope. I'm hearing the word of God, and I believe that today God will answer me in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, the sacrifice of praise, they say, is the fruit of of our lips, but worship is the fruit of our heart. Worship is the fruit of our heart. That's why there's no sacrifice of worship. People of God, you can praise God. <laughs> I don't mean a word. Indeed, Jesus said in Matthew 15, 8, Matthew 15, 8, he said, these people draw near unto me. With their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away. So it's possible to praise God. 
to have the right lingua. But you are thinking of something else. You really don't believe the words that you are even saying. Because most of the time, our praise is not coming from the heart. We are just repeating the songs. We are just jumping and all that. That will change today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, it is possible to be jumping and shouting and you're just playing. You're not focused. Your heart is not engaged. God says, I'm looking for true worshipers who will worship me in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. That is what God is looking for. Praise is a celebration. Worship is an exaltation. You put him on a pedestal. It's more intimate. By the time you kneel down, it helps your focus. It's more intimate. You put God up there. You focus more by the time you are kneeling down to worship God. It involves more of reverence. It involves a lot of adoration and a heart of gratitude. People of God, adoration, exaltation, gratitude. It might not even be loud. Anna was worshiping God, pouring out her heart unto God. It might be silent, but your heart is engaged. God is looking for hearts today, this month, that will connect with him. And I pray that as we praise God, as we worship God, as we thank God today, we will engage our hearts so that this thanksgiving service will be one of a difference in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13 to 14. You shall seek me and find me. When you search with me for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you. People of God, the Bible says in Psalm 104, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. His courts with praise. But with worship, you enter into the holy of do we understand? It's worship, thanksgiving, praise, but coming from the heart. And that is what God wants us to do today in Jesus' mighty name. When you kneel down, it's not only in worship, it's in thanksgiving. Look at Luke 17, 16, the ten lepers. It says, and one came back and fell down. To his face, thanking God. So when you kneel down, it's not only in worship. It's in thanksgiving. You engage your heart. You are focused. You are intimate with God. Pouring out your heart unto God. Of course, it's possible to kneel down. And of course, your heart is far away. But it's more possible when you are just praising God. Sometimes we are distracted. But today, all that will end in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, the next thing she did, she changed her position from standing and looking at him. She surrendered to him and called him Lord. Lord is my owner, your landlord. She surrendered. Jesus did not want to be seen only as a miracle worker. No, 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 no. He's not an ATM machine. He wants relationship. He wants you to surrender to him as Lord over everything. My owner, my helper. He says, Lord, help me. Help me. Lord, help me. And I pray that God will help someone today in Jesus' mighty name. People of God. Jesus threw another salvo. Called her a dog in 
verse 26. That it's not fit to give the children's bread to dogs. For people of God, it was too late. <laughs> it was too late. This woman had seen something. This woman had touched something. She came to Jesus on the platform of mercy. And she had read or knew about the sure mercies of David. God will never turn you back. Amen? Look at what the Bible says in 2 Samuel 7, 14 to 16. 2 Samuel 7, 14 to 16. It says, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. He says, but, huh, but, what? Amen? My mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. People of God, verse 16. Verse 16. He says, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. He says, yes, I can chasten him, but I will never remove the mercy from him. I pray that will be someone's experience even today in Jesus' mighty name. That no matter what's going on, you will be a candidate of the Lord's mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, she came to one that is called the Father of mercy. People of God. And she knew that Jesus had said that no one will ask for bread and will collect two. You won't ask for fish and they give you serpent. She knew that today something must give. I know I'm not qualified, but that's why I came to you on a platform of mercy. May God have mercy on someone today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And of course, when Jesus talked about bread, ha, she formed a mental image. If there is bread, there must be crumbs. I thank God for crumbs. I don't even need the bread. The little message is enough for me. But that I will go away empty-handed, not today. Give me the crumbs. She saw her cup half full, not half empty. People of God, she humbled herself. She thanked him for the crumbs. If it's only crumbs that I'm getting, just bring it. I know whatever you give me will be more than enough. People of God, she had seen it. She had a mental picture of the healing of her daughter. She anticipated that by the time I get home, my daughter will be healed. People of God, the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, when we pray, believe when you are praying that you receive them. Even though you can't touch it physically. And then you shall have them. If that is the attitude all of us have today, the thanksgiving will be from your heart. Because when you pray for that husband, for that wife, for that breakthrough, believe that God has done it. Then from your heart, you will be able to see it and thank him for it. He says, if you can cross that bridge, then surely you will receive it. That is the principle of God. You must believe first, then you will see. How many of us are believers today? How many of us can see the bread, the healings? How many of us can see even the mercy of God, the promotions, amen? How many of us can see the fruit of the womb? How many of us can see the manifold blessings, marriages, amen? How many of us can see those open doors? How many of us can see God stepping into the picture of our lives and doing something great for us? You must see it. Unless you see it, you can't receive it. She saw something. And that's why she stayed put. She was focused. She knelt down. She thanked God. She 
worship God even personally. My prayer is that today, as we engage our heart in our thanksgiving, in our worship, in our praises, every barrier will be shattered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This woman was not going empty-handed. She was not going empty-handed. She believed God. She trusted God. She said, Lord, huh, all I have is you in heaven and earth. All I have is it's you. you. All, all I have is you, you in heaven and earth. All I have is you. And she was kneeling down. Jesus. All I have is you. Oh, Jesus. All I have is you. I don't have anybody else. You are my Lord. No one else can help me. No one else can help me. Help me. Help me. Save me. Heal me. Deliver me. Answer me. Jesus, 
And he gave you that money to build his kingdom. God for the jealous God. He can take it, you know. So let us think. Let us thank him from the bottom of our hearts. And I pray that all throughout this month we will have a heart of gratitude. When you had a heart of gratitude, when you worship him, all barriers will come down. That woman should not have gotten a divine intervention from Jesus. Everything was against her. <laughs> but she knew about the sure mercies of David. God says, if you come to me, I won't turn you back. But God needs to be Lord. Don't see me as a miracle worker. Yes, miracles happen on a Thanksgiving service. But beyond that, you can receive a miracle and not know him as Lord. But he says, hey, <laughs> I'm Lord. And when she surrendered and submitted, then every barrier came down. I don't know what barriers, what limitations that you are suffering things you want to do that is not possible it can be health it can be spiritual barriers ancestral barriers I don't know what the barriers are causing all kinds of things but today as you come to him with your heart God will answer you in Jesus name how many of us are going to thank God from the bottom of our heart. How many of us are going to praise him? From the bottom of our heart. How many of us are going to worship him? Surrender to him? Today, my prayer is that every prayer will be answered by fire. God will rend the heavens 
and answer you speedily. Amen. There is nothing that God cannot do. He can reverse the irreversible. He can bring water out of a rock. Make a way where there seems to be no way. He can force men and women to favor you. He says, I've commanded that widow to show you favor, to sustain you. My prayer is that this one will be full of awesome testimonies. Because we're not just going to play before God. We're going to engage our hearts. Truly, we are grateful. How many of us are truly grateful that you are alive today? I'm grateful. I am grateful. I'm grateful. If he had taken you before now, he would still be a God of faithfulness without injustice. This is prerogative to kill, to make alive. Jesus was innocent. He said, you, innocent Jesus, you are going to suffer for the sinners. Who can complain? So that we're here is a grace. That you are standing is a grace. <laughs> that you are alive is a grace. That you are this couple's mentis, you know your name, <laughs> is a grace. So all it needs is just for one boat to be taken, and you will know who you are. So many of us are grateful to God today. How many of us are going to be grateful to God all throughout this month and all throughout our days? A lifestyle of thanking God. A lifestyle of worshiping God. Because without him, we are nothing. Please be seated as all eyes are closed. Are you here? You don't have a relationship with him. He pulled that woman into a relationship. Don't just come to me for miracles, miracles, miracles. I want to know you personally. You need to know me personally. That's the most important thing. So if you're here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. The most important thing you can do in this life is to get to know him. One day, all of this will be over. And we'll stand before him. Is your name in that register in heaven? It will be a wasted life, you know. A life that is not profitable unto God. So the most important thing is to get your name in that register. Because when you die, they can say all kinds of things. Ah, disappointed command wants her to die. Then judgment. So if you are here, you don't know him as his personal Lord and Savior. You can surrender today. He will accept you. He will receive you. So you want to come to Jesus. They've opened the book in heaven. It's also a book of remembrance, a book of record. In the day of trouble, is your name in that book. Why should he come for you? Why should he help you? My ears are not deaf that I can't hear. My hands are not sure that I can't save. It is because of your sin. So your day of trouble, he will look away. Not all those that say, Lord, Lord, will make it. Important thing, relationship. Do you have two birthdays? When you were born of the flesh, important. A rich man came to Jesus Christ. He just was not. That was, he knew something was missing. He says, yes. You need the second birth. When you are born again. It's Jesus that said it. You must be born again. So if you have just born once and not born again, ah. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus.